new session that is ultrasound cases spotters and case based discussion set 3 here you can see there is a fetus where all the bowel loops both small and large bowel loops are dilated and there is even associated polyhydramnias so this is the video where you can see both the small and large bowel loops are dilated even there is normal peristalsis within the bowel loops with polyhydramnias so whenever you see a imaging features like this on ultrasound definitely suspect congenital chloride diarrhea so what are the causes for this uh, polyhydramnias with intestinal dilatation apart from congenital chloride diarrhea are mucinum peritoritis, batter syndrome and Hirschsprung disease. So these are the three clinical features I have already told which, which helps to differentiate CCD from other causes. And even MR helps in differentiating uh, from other mucinum causes like because on MRI the bowel fluid will be hyper intense on T1 weighted images in mucinum where it whereas it is hypo intense on T1 weighted images in watery diarrhea and CCD. So the treatment of uh, congenital chloride diarrhea is replenishment of fluid, sodium chloride and potassium chloride to prevent chronic renal failure and chronic kidney disease. So this is a case of congenital chloride diarrhea and uh, you can pause the slide see uh, see all the other causes of fetal bowel dilatation. Thanks to Dr. Sheshang Chapala for contributing this case. Next case you can see uh, there is a triangular defect noted within the uh, uterine wall, anterior uterine wall close to the previous caesarean scar section. Here I will play the video. You can see this is the defect noted at the level of caesarean scar. Base pointing to base is communicating with the uterine cavity and apex pointing towards the myometrium with associated myometrial thinning. So thanks to Dr. Rajesh Agarwal and Amol Karvan Desar for contributing these cases. So whenever you see a triangular defect with uh, at the level of caesarean section scar with base point uh, base communicating with the uterine cavity apex pointing towards the anterior myometrium with thinning of the myometrium definitely suspect uterine isthmocele or caesarean scar diverticulum or scar niche so these are all the findings we had to remember tvs is the most common primary imaging modality best time is proliferative phase even hhg you can see extension of contrast into the myometrial pouch MRI is the best modality to characterize the nature of the contents, borders of the defect and even myometrial thickness measurement. Simple fluid can be hyperintense on T1 and T2 and T2 weighted images, hyperintense on T2 weighted images with no enhancement. Blood can be hyperintense on T1 with T2 shading sign with no or with or without rim enhancement. Abscess formation will be hyper in, ISO2 hyperintense on T1, hyperintense on T2 weighted images with thick irregular rim enhancement. Treatment is either conservative with oral OCP pills or it can be hysteroscopic or laparoscopic correction. The main aim is drainage of accumulated menstrual fluid rather than anatomical correction. So remember uterine is thermoseal. Next case, a female, 8 year female came with swelling in inguinal region with intermittent pain. You can see the soft tissue lesion which is typically showing follicle like structures and this lesion is closely communicating with the canal. This canal is in turn communicating with the peritoneal cavity. So whenever you see a ovary like structure in the inguinal region close to the labia, we communicate with the canal which directly communicates with the peritoneal cavity, definitely suspect canal of neck hernias. This canal of neck hernias are rare and occur in female children. This is nothing but the failure to the obliteration of the canal of the neck. So whenever you see a direct connection of the herniated contents with the peritoneal cavity which is hallmark of this hernia, the contents can be bowel, omentum, fallopian tube or urinary bladder. Most common will be ovaries. So whenever you see ovaries, definitely do color doppler or power doppler, identify the vascular pedicle with adequate PRF settings to rule out ovarian torsion because these uh, ovaries in canal of neck hernia are more prone for ovarian torsion. Thanks to Dr. Maysoon for contributing this case. Next case, you can see there is thickening of the GB wall, multiple cystic spaces within the GB wall with multiple cometella reverberation artifacts from the GB wall. So whenever you see this type of findings, definitely suspect GB wall adenomyomatosis. So this GB wall adenomyomatosis, nothing but you can see ultrasound features as I already discussed. These nothing but reverberation artifacts are due to uh, cholesterol crystals which are deposited in the intramural cystic diverticulae or in the rokitansky ashoff sinuses. CT rosary sign is nothing but enhancing epithelium in the intramural diverticulae surrounded by unenhanced hypertrophied gallbladder muscularis. Even in, on MR on T2 weighted images you can see multiple T2 hyperintense cystic lesions noted within the wall which resembles the pearl, pearl necklace. So this is pearl necklace sign on MRI in GB wall adenomyomatosis. Next case you can see this is an adnexial lesion. Uh, adnexial lesion where you can see multiple uh, balls which are floating and they are ecogenic with separated by few thin septa so whenever you see this type of imaging findings that is there are multiple ecogenic lobular lesions 
or floating balls within the adnexal region definitely suspect mature cystic teratoma so this is nothing but floating ball sign or even meat ball sign or truffle sign or boba sign sometimes you can see a large ball this is large ball which is seen at the level of fat fluid interface so this is nothing but called poke ball sign so floating ball sign and poke ball sign remember in mature cystic teratomas thanks to dr nishan patel for contributing this case and dr bhupender singh for contributing this poke ball sign in teratoma so these are all the signs which we have discussed and the, these are the fine signs which are seen in mature cystic teratoma but similar dermoids in the neck you can see that sack of mar bill sign that is in the head and neck next case uh, you can see there is a collection noted between the skin and sub subcutaneous tissues and the fascia typically at the level of greater trochanter so this is nothing but a classical moral level lesion so this moral level lesion occurs between the shearing because of shearing force separating subcutaneous fat from deeper fascia and there is fluid collection between the skin and subcutaneous tissues and the fascia so the, this is a panoramic image uh, showing typically collection between the skin subcutaneous fat and the fascia underlying muscles are normal and this is the greater trochanter here also you can see this is the collection uh, adjacent to the greater trochanter and a few fat focus Uh, so this is a, these are the classical example classical imaging features seen in moral level lesion typically they can see the, these are seen over the greater trochanter femur in the thigh but they can also occur in lumbar region scapula over the knee and the and in the back next case you can see there is a hypoechoic lesion arising from the wall of the stomach this is the intact mucosa this lesion is projecting it towards the lumen and this lesion is making obtuse angle with the stomach wall and showing vascularity and color doppler so whenever you see a heterogeneous hypoechoic lesions with intact mucosa arising from the mall projecting into the lumen with uh, raised vascularity and even cystic areas making obtuse angle with the stomach wall definitely suspect gist the close differential can be leomyoma thanks to dr survey prakash singhal for contributing this case and uh, more about gist you can see in my previous video that is gist redefined where i have extensively covered about gist next case uh, this is a, you can see there is a hypoechoic lesion noted in the peritoneum with central echogenic area or calcified focus which is freely mobile in the peritoneum so whenever you see a imaging features like this on ultrasound definitely suspect peritoneal mouse or peritoneal mice thanks to dr prasid sharan for contributing this case and the ct you can see this is the hypodense lesion with central calcified focus close to the right lobe of the liver and it's freely noted in the peritoneum so this type of lesion should be mobile they should move freely in the peritoneum could not commonly attach with the bowel so these are nothing but peritoneal loose bodies or peritoneal mice these these are nothing but epiploic appendages are susceptible to torsion due to narrow pedicle acute torsion produces epiploic appendagitis whereas chronic torsion leads to these peritoneal loose bodies thank you all